One of my favorite quotes is from Lao Tzu and it goes, to attain knowledge, add things every day. To attain wisdom, remove things every day. I have been reflecting on this recently and I found that when it comes to simplifying my life, minimalism, self-care, slowing down, all of that good stuff, it's been mostly things that I stopped doing or things that I quit rather than things that I started doing or added to my life. And that is great because usually quitting things is just a bit easier than adding new things or new habits to your life. So I sat down and wrote a list of 50 things that I quit to simplify my life, especially as someone who is prone to overthinking, worrying, feeling anxious. These things have been super helpful just for putting my mind at ease, feeling a bit calmer, and just keeping my life running a bit more smoothly. Feel free to look at this video as a list of suggestions and just pick a couple that you feel could also be very helpful for you to simplify your life as well. Welcome back everyone, and if you're new here, this is a place where you can get tips and inspiration for living a simpler, happier, and calmer life. Feel free to hit subscribe down below if you haven't already, because I would love to see you again next week. Before you ask, yes, I did something different with my hair. <laughs> Don't ask me about it, it's been a day, okay? I have been trying to start filming for like an hour now, and at this point I just, I just, I just needed to start filming. <laughs> Following what's trendy. I have no idea what's trendy anymore. <laughs> I don't want to know, I don't need to know, except for seeing everyone wearing the same shoes when I go outside. I just wear what I like and I'll only buy something if I feel that I could use that item instead of trying to buy my way into a trend. Saves me time, saves me money, saves me energy. What more do I need to say? treating myself to things I don't really enjoy. This might sound weird, but I used to try and treat myself or pamper myself the way that you see on TV, like going shopping, painting my nails, getting massages. And it actually took me a while to realize I don't like getting massages. I don't like shopping. I do paint my nails sometimes, but it's not something I enjoy doing. It's just something I enjoy having done. <laughs> so treating myself now looks very different, like treating myself to a half hour in bed with a book. Washing my clothes too often. This has drastically decreased the amount of laundry that I need to do. I will only wash something if it actually needs to be washed. If it's, you know, smelling a little funky or if it has a stain or it lost its shape, something like that. Otherwise, I'll just put it back. Keep watching, reading or playing something even if I don't enjoy it. Life is too short to keep doing something that you don't enjoy. I will give it a good try. I'm not gonna quit like after an hour into a book. I will really give it, you know, a good try. But if like halfway in the book, I'm still not enjoying it, I'll just leave it be. Overcomplicating my meals. Especially these last couple of months when life just has been very, very crazy. This is a lifesaver for us. We go back to super, super simple, basic meals. I just let go of that expectation that all my meals need to look like they can be on Pinterest or on Instagram and just focus on making healthy, simple meals. It's cheaper, it's quicker. It is a great way to just save yourself some time, money and energy whenever life gets really busy. Ironing. I decluttered my iron and ironing board. When we moved in here, I just realized that I haven't ironed in years and I don't really want to. We line dry everything, so usually things are not that creased and if they are, I'll just wear it for an hour and my body heat somehow takes care of the creases. So I mean, like, I stopped ironing. <laughs> over scheduling myself. I've learned that leaving white space, empty space in my calendar where I can just do whatever I feel like I want to or need to do at that time is absolutely crucial for me to keep feeling good and not burn out again. So over scheduling is something that I really just stopped doing and try to avoid at all costs. And it doesn't mean that I cannot do anything productive during that day. Like I will still have to clean usually or go grocery shopping or something. And that's fine, but it needs to be on my time. Addictive games. I'm talking games on your phone that keep you glued to your phone for way longer than you want to. This is the very reason that I quit Neko Atsume because it was a super cute game and I was spending way too much time on my phone. Also games like Animal Crossing where the real time actually goes on inside the game and if you don't like 
play the game and water your flowers, they die, for example. I love video games, but I want to be the one to decide whether or not I want to play them. So if it is too addictive, I'll just not play that game. Buying extras for things where you really only need one. Things like your wallet, a pair of sunglasses, phone cases. I really think that it just makes more sense to always keep using the same one. Buying extras will only end up costing you more money. It takes time to find them and like switch them out and switch them back. In my opinion, there's really no need. Always saying yes. As many people, I am a bit of a people pleaser and I especially don't like it when I feel like I'm disappointing someone that I really like or that I'm hurting their feelings. But I also learned that saying yes all the time is a great way to lead a very busy, complicated life. And I know about myself that I cannot lead a very busy life without burning out after a while. So I need to protect myself, my time, my energy. And that is why I now say no when I need to. A good rule of thumb is if someone asks you to do something and it will cost you more in terms of your time and energy, then it will gain the other person by you saying yes, then that is a good opportunity to say no. Scrolling, first hour after waking up and an hour before going to bed. I don't want the first thing that I see when I wake up in the morning to be something like annoying or depressing on my phone. And I also don't want that to be the last thing I see before I fall asleep. Drinking lots of coffee. This is more self-care related, but I feel a big difference if I drink coffee as opposed to drinking green tea. Both have caffeine, both give me just a little bit of energy, focus, concentration, kind of like the happy feeling, but green tea is just so much gentler. Drinking coffee gets me really into my head, my thoughts are racing, I feel a lot more anxious and stressed, and I don't have any of that when I drink green tea. So if I need a little bit of energy, I'll just have a matcha or a sencha and coffee only as an exception. Shopping without a plan. This goes for actual shopping, grocery shopping, whatever it is, always bring a list and a plan. This way I don't even have to think about it. When I'm at the store, I'll just work through my list, go home, I'm not tempted to buy things on impulse, makes the whole process so much easier. Strenuous workouts. I stopped doing the kind of workouts where it takes my body like two or three or four days to recover afterwards. I used to think that I just needed to be able to do that and if I could just do it often enough, my body will get used to it but that never happened. <laughs> so I've accepted this about myself now and I only do gentle, frequent exercise instead and I feel a lot better. Thinking I'm not allowed to quit things. We're always encouraged to keep going, don't be a quitter, but in my experience, quitting can sometimes be a wonderful thing. We change, we evolve, our priorities shift and being able to quit something, not only is it just keeping you from wasting all of your time and energy on things that are not providing anything for you anymore, but in my experience, it also helps me to try out a bunch of different things and really be open-minded because I don't feel like I have to just pick one thing and then stick with it no matter what. Wearing uncomfortable underwear. The kind of underwear that you feel on your body the whole day. Just a little bit of self-care here, but these things can go a long way. If your underwear is bothering you, try focusing more on comfort. Live with notifications. I don't care what it is, if it's something that will give me a notification, I will turn it off immediately. If there is something really urgent that I need to know right away, then people will call and this has happened maybe three times in the last 10 years. I decide when I want to grab my phone and not the other way around. So if you want to take charge of your attention, your time, Definitely, I encourage you right after this video to just switch off your notifications. Keeping my phone with me at all times. I almost never have my phone within reach. Whenever I'm at home, we have a phone tray. It's right over there in the hallway where we keep our shoes. That's also where we keep our phones if we're not using them. And this makes everything easier because you're not tempted to constantly grab your phone out of your pocket. It's not within reach. Talking down to myself. Talking down to yourself is really awful for your self-esteem and it can really distort your image that you have of yourself. Plus, it has been scientifically proven that being kind and understanding and empathetic to yourself is much more effective in you know, terms of self-development and growth and getting things done and sticking to positive, healthy habits than talking down to yourself is. So if it is not something that I would say to someone else, I stopped saying that to myself as well. 
turning small things into big projects. A couple days ago, I noticed a small spot on the floor next to the trash bin. And the first thought in my head was, I need to mop the entire house. <laughs> this is apparently how my mind works. And it's very annoying because mopping the entire house is a big chore. So I will procrastinate and that little spot will stay there for like a week. So what I like to do now instead is just take care of the little problem, the little spot on the floor it takes like one minute and stop turning that into like a huge project that feels too overwhelming and I'll just not do it. Pointless discussions. I think it's usually pretty obvious if you're having a conversation with someone, if it is going to be a meaningful one, even if you disagree or if it's just going to be a pointless discussion. And if it's one of those, I try to avoid them. Pretending to be someone I'm not. In school, I always learned to downplay my grades or my results or my understanding of the subject matter in order to get my friends to like me more. Even later in my early 20s, I sometimes pretended to like things that I really didn't enjoy just so that I would have something in common with others. Trying to be someone you're not or claiming you enjoy things you don't is only going to get you into a pickle and it's going to keep you from just being authentically yourself and attracting people that like you for you. So I'm glad that I stopped doing this and just living more authentically has really helped to simplify my life as well. Putting off paying bills. No one likes paying bills, but I've learned to pay them right away as soon as they come in. It keeps my head clear. I know that everything is paid up and I can just move on with my life. Productivity systems. I just write a to-do list now and I work through it. That's it. <laughs> I have a calendar with my appointments. I know what I need to do when and that's enough. If they work for you, absolutely great. Keep doing them. For me, however, productivity systems are just another way to procrastinate and overcomplicate things. Planning things when I'm on my period. This one's a little self-care related. I have PMDD, so my periods and the weeks before my periods are always kind of hard on me and I take my pill nine weeks. So once every nine weeks, I will block out the like most difficult two weeks in my calendar and I am very careful with scheduling things during that time if I can also schedule them some other time. There's kind of this idea that we just need to push through and not make a big deal about it and just keep up our normal productivity when we're on our period. But for a lot of women, that's not realistic and it's not for me either. So if that is you, then please know that it is perfectly okay to take extra good care of yourself during the more difficult weeks in your cycle elaborate morning or evening routines. I feel like I'm bashing everyone on YouTube with this video. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean it that way. Having all of these like super healthy habits and cramming them as much as you can into your morning and evening routines, I think that that can cause extra stress and extra pressure to do everything perfectly all the time. I like to just keep it simple, do whatever feels good for you. And if there's something that you're doing that makes you feel bad, like scrolling on your phone in the morning, just replace that with something else, something positive that'll serve you, like drinking a cup of tea or doing a little meditation, whatever you enjoy. And that's enough. There's no need for perfectionism here. Holiday gifts. We basically almost entirely stopped with the holiday gifts. My boyfriend and I also don't give each other anything for any holiday or Valentine's or our anniversary. I think the way we spend our holidays can easily become just a lot of stress and huge expenses. And I don't think that that's the way it has to be. In my opinion, holidays don't really need gifts. So if you enjoy the holidays and you want to go all out and that brings you joy, definitely do. In my experience, I like to keep them really, really simple. Holiday decorations. We have simplified this a lot and we only have two sets of string lights now that I like to use like in the darker months of the year and that's it. I do enjoy holiday decorations like in other people's homes or in people's backyards or in the store at the mall. I like looking at it, but in my own home, I keep it super simple watching the news every day. This doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you a bad citizen. In my case, the news had a hugely negative impact on my mental health. And if I don't feel good because I'm burdening myself with all of that negativity, because I feel like I should, then I cannot feel good and show up and try and make a difference in the world, no matter how small. So if you recognize this and the news has a negative impact on your mental health too, 
I recommend decreasing that drastically. Going to bed with a dirty kitchen. No matter how tired we are, my boyfriend and I have a pact to always clean up the kitchen before we go to sleep because it's just such a yucky feeling to wake up in the morning with like yesterday's dirty dishes everywhere. Buying unhealthy snacks and junk food. Ever since June 2021, my boyfriend and I stopped buying unhealthy junk food, unhealthy snacks for the house and it's just not here. So that's been a game changer because it makes everything so much simpler. It takes out all of the thinking and the pondering whether or not to eat the cookie or the ice cream or the potato chips because it's just not here. We only get something like that if we have guests coming over and we might make an exception when we go out to eat like a slice of cake or whatever. At home, it's just not here. Over consuming information. If we're not careful, our brain just gets crammed full of information all day, every day. And I already have a pretty overactive mind. So I don't listen to a bunch of podcasts or spend a lot of time on social media or read the paper or watch a ton of shows on Netflix. I'm very selective about the kind of information that I want to consume because I get tired <laughs> counting the books I'm reading. It doesn't matter how many books a year you're reading. I know that this is a huge deal online, but it doesn't matter if you enjoy reading, and I know I do, just focus on enjoying the books that you're reading, whether that's like three books a year or a hundred books a year. You don't have to win a contest. You don't have to be in a competition with anyone else. Just enjoy reading and don't focus on the numbers. Not accepting my body type. I'm a little bit curvy. I have hips, I have a butt. I don't know why I got it when I was 13. <laughs> my parents don't really have it, but you know, I do. For the longest time, I kind of wished I had a different body type, especially seeing, you know, all these influencers online and they oftentimes have kind of like a petite, skinnier body type than me. And I would wish I had that. Funny thing is I love my body type on others. <laughs> I just couldn't really accept it for myself. After a while, I decided to let that go and accept my body for what it is. I feel healthy. I feel sexy, I feel good in my own skin, and mostly I just try to focus on appreciating all of the things that my body does for me instead of on what it looks like. Trying different brands if I already have something that works. This goes for anything and everything. Great way to simplify your life. If there is a product or a brand that you just love, that really works for you, then you can just stick with that and you can stock up on it when it's on sale and just leave all of the other products and brands out there, just be there without feeling the need to try them out yourself. Taking on other people's emotions as my own. I finally came to the understanding that everyone has their own life to live and their emotions can stay where they are, where they belong. I don't need to take them on for myself and I can listen to someone and want the best for that person without also being an emotional sponge. Saying I'm okay when I'm not. I quit saying I'm okay when I'm not okay because it's perfectly okay to say that you're not okay. And if we can acknowledge this, then we can either help ourselves or ask other people to help us if that's possible, if they can always craving more. Especially with my work and with this channel, I had to consciously decide to stop always craving more, like more subscribers, more views, more growth. Maybe for you, that's another goal or personal goal or something that you are working on. In a lot of cases, I've learned that just keeping what you already have is already a huge accomplishment. And if you always crave more, then you will also never be satisfied. So it's never ending. Keeping things around that make me feel bad. Nothing is worth making you feel less than you are. Shopping for my fantasy self. My fantasy self is in many ways quite different from my actual self. And I used to always buy things for that person because I felt like I had to aspire to be that person. But a lot of the times these items would just end up not getting used and make me feel inadequate. Complaining. Of course, I'm not perfect. I do complain sometimes. I don't like toxic positivity either, and that is perfectly fine. But I also know that complaining will never change anything, and it's mostly just a lot of negativity. So if it is something that I can change, I will try to change it. If it is not something I can change, I'll try to accept it. And if it is not something that I can or am willing to accept, then I will just stop doing that thing or just leave it altogether. Much more constructive. Wanting to be the best. 
I've never really enjoyed competition, but I've always tried to be the best that I could be. I was quite a perfectionist and I always just had one setting, which was going all in. Now I think it's fine to just be okay at something or just be mediocre in ways. And I think that's perfectly fine. And the upside of this is also that it has allowed me to feel way less intimidated by people who are, for example, very successful or who are very talented and actually just have an open mind to be able to learn from these people because I'm, I'm not feeling like I need to be just as successful or just as talented as they are. I can just be me. Always needing to make the most optimal choice. Whether it's about what to wear today or what activity to do today or show to watch or book to read or whatever it is, like there are so many options, too many options and decision fatigue is a real thing. And if you're already someone who is prone to overthinking, then this can be quite tiresome. So if it is something that's not very important, like choosing an outfit, I prioritize quick decisions over choosing like the best most optimal decision showering every day i stopped doing this quite a few years ago and i've learned that i'm perfectly okay not showering daily and the other days i will just wash up at the sink and it saves me time it saves us water and also my skin is way less dry trying to do everything myself if something is very difficult and you have the option of hiring a professional or asking for help in any way then i think that's always a good thing to do the day i decided to hire an accountant is the day that i finally started getting good sleep again because i didn't have to worry about making mistakes while doing my taxes my accountant, she's amazing, she's fast, she knows everything and she is worth every penny in my opinion because it gives me so much peace of mind. Coloring my hair. I stopped coloring my hair a couple of years ago and by now it has saved me so much money, so much time and my hair is a lot healthier. Gossiping. Negative gossip is awful for her building trust with people. It's just a whole lot of negativity that's not really doing anyone any good. So a couple years ago, I made the decision to try and not gossip about people. Of course, I'm not perfect, but I do try. Ignoring my natural rhythm. I tried to be the kind of person who could just wake up in the morning and exercise, but my body just does not want to. <laughs> so it feels much more natural for me to work with my mind in the morning and early afternoon, and then maybe do a workout late afternoon or in the evenings. So instead of trying to fight against my natural rhythm, I try to work with it now. Scrolling during my breaks absolutely life-changing when i'm taking a break now whether that's like a lunch break or a five minute break whatever it is i try not to grab my phone and instead do something else just walking around a bit or i don't know clearing some dishes or making something to eat whatever it is but one i try to not be sitting and two i try to not be on my phone or on my laptop and because of that my breaks are actually more restorative now i actually feel a little refreshed coming back from them. My body feels a bit better because I'm not sitting for hours in a row. So instead of just cramming your head full of more stuff during your breaks, maybe just leave the technology out of it for a while. Definitely let me know what is something that you have quit that really helped you to simplify your life in the comment section down below and I'll see you there. If you're looking to simplify your life and really make some big changes to clear some of that chaos and create more of what you love into your life, then definitely also check out my online course, which is called In Love With Your Life. This is a 20 week program with weekly lessons and worksheets and all the guidance you need to simplify all big aspects of your life and make lasting positive changes. I've worked on this program for a long time and it's so wonderful to see everyone's feedback on it, saying that you know it really helped them to make big lasting changes. So I will leave the link to where you can find more info and sign up as well as read other people's experiences with the course in the description box below. As always, questions, comments, conversations down below. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you again next week. Bye bye. If you find it hard to say no on the spot, tell people that you'll think about it and get back to them later when you have your answer prepared. Lifesaver.